It was just nine days ago when Superstorm Sandy cost the eastern seaboard dozens of lives and billions in damages. And tonight, fresh stress and pain as a snowy nor'easter rips across New England down to Maryland and Delaware, blowing sleet and snow into Sandy's open wounds. And for tens of thousands still without heat, the threat of hypothermia very real tonight. Our extreme weather teams Ginger Z spent the day in New York's hardest hit communities and reports now from slushy lower Manhattan. Ginger. You know, Bill, this is just one of so many spots that we're just starting to see the signs of recovering after Sandy. But look at this. Now we have a wet, slushy, snowy mess on our hands. A mess that's all part of a nor'easter, dropping up to 10 inches in parts of Connecticut already. And you'll get a couple more inches in places overnight. But this whole thing will be out of our hair by tomorrow night. And really, it will just end up being an icy speed bump on the road to recovery, especially in a place where we spent most of our day, the Rockaways. Tonight, in the battered Rockaways, a freshly frosted mess. Heavy snow falling atop Hurricane Sandy's destruction. It's a disaster layered on a disaster. New York and New Jersey had just dried off after being inundated by that superstorm. And now, it's a brand new storm, and it's the last thing they need. For many, it's adding insult to injury. No one's ready for it again. <laughs> Nobody wants it again, I should say. All across the Northeast, the wintry storm is dropping wet snow, sleet, rain, and wind gusts that could reach 60 miles per hour. Already, it's prompted coastline communities in New Jersey to order mandatory evacuations. Sandy could cost Americans $50 billion in damage by early estimates, and much of the cleanup remains to be done. Tonight, 675,000 people are still without power since last week's disaster and hundreds of thousands displaced. The whole day started with high anxiety. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie urging hurricane survivors to be cautious and patient. You know, we may take a setback in the next 24 hours. You need to be prepared for that. I'm prepared for that. I hate setbacks. I don't tolerate them usually very well, but this one I can't control. In North Jersey, buildings damaged by Sandy were re-boarded up. They have extra plywood now as people brace for a second battering. Winds howled into New York City, where subway systems are still under repair. And now, railroads and bridges are frozen, once again crippling the area into an impassable mess. It's really, really bad waiting online for gas. Now we're waiting online to get home. It is a good idea to stay indoors uh, with this because Hurricane Sandy weakened trees and the high winds tonight could cause more trees and limbs to come down and the storm debris still on our streets to blow around dangerously. The debris, which is everywhere, needs to be cleared before the high winds kick up. New York airports are also locked down again with more than 1,700 flights canceled for today and tomorrow. Earlier today, we ventured out into those dismantled neighborhoods and watched the new storm shut down cleanup. Rain has just now changed over to snow. All of the work has stopped. The cleanup is starting to get windy here in Rockaway Beach. Possessions trashed by the surge sit in piles along the road as far as the eye can see. The people we met here are just plain tired. Enough is enough, you know? It just, oh well, you just deal with it. How do you feel? Tired, exhausted, but hey, what am I going to do? This is life. Life on every block and in every home. Fourth Regina McManus yeah. is the fourth My generation in this home. Sick. Wow. Yeah. And to see it like this. And yeah. she is not leaving it behind. This is the water line, right? Yes. So up to, you said? 53 50, inches. 53 inches. And it all came in at once. Nonstop. Nonstop. Look at this, it's already cold enough. We're seeing our breath inside the home and they had to bring the one generator they have inside because of tonight's storm. That generator has made life livable. And this is the one lamp? Yes. So you turn that one on. Yes, and we only night. allow one bulb. But without power tonight, the temperature in the house is already 45 degrees and dropping. And now another storm. Yes, another one's coming but I'm being reassured that it's not going to be a flood zone this time. With temps falling across the region, hypothermia is a serious risk for all those who still don't have power and heat. Oh, I'm just waiting for electricity, and then this morning I heard 30 mile an hour winds. You know they're not going to work on the power lines today. For Regina, the succession of storms has been life-altering. I woke up this morning for the first year in my life, 53. 
Don't tell everybody. No. I have no clue who the president is, and I really don't care. <laughs> By late afternoon, police were still pleading with people to take shelter. Board the bus at Fort Tilden Park. Donation sites like this, filled with water, food, and blankets, are now making room for people who need a warm place to sleep. So what we're trying to do is clear out a shelter in there so that all the people here that aren't evacuating can have a place to stay. While Regina decided to stick it out, her neighbor told us he didn't stay for Sandy and he won't stay for this one either. Hopefully it's not going to be as bad, but we're not going to stay. We're not going to stay. I have to think of my family first. Houses, houses could be rebuilt. And that's the way it is. So I told you that the snow was wet and sticky, but it's heavy too. And it's now sitting on power lines and get this so unlucky, but a lot of folks who just got their power back and I mean thousands are now without power again tonight because of this nor'easter.